Spline Objects Part 2. In this lesson, we will discuss the rest of the spline objects, donut, engon, star, helix, and text. Let's see them all one by one. Let's start with donut. Donut is a combination of two concentric circles. Click donut from the spline objects list. Now click and drag on top viewport. Once you're satisfied, leave the mouse button, adjust the inner circle radius, and finally click again. All rollouts are the same except parameter, which includes radius 1 and radius 2 parameters. Adjust and observe the changes. Next in the list is Ngon. Ngon is used to create a multi-sided figure that is n number of sides, like a five-sided pentagon, a six-sided hexagon, and many more. Let's see how to use this. Press Ctrl A and press Delete to clear the viewport. Now press Z to reset. Just click Ngon and go to the top viewport and drag the mouse. See, you got a pentagon here because in the parameter rollout the sides value is 5. You can increase or decrease the sides value easily and according to the changing sides value your Ngon will also be affected. You can give values for radius and corner radius. If you choose inscribed, then the radius will be from the center to the corners of the engon, whereas if you choose circumscribed, then the radius will be from the center to the sides of the engon. If you check circular, your engon will be changed to a perfect circle. Next to the engon is star. Star. Everyone knows about star. Here you can create a star with any number of points. Let's see how you can use this. Press Ctrl A and press Delete to clear the viewport, and press Z to reset. Click Star. Drag on the top viewport, which will give the first radius of star. Leave the mouse and adjust the second radius. Let's check the parameter rollout. Radius 1 and Radius 2 will specify inner and outer radius respectively. Points will specify star points, which range from 3 to 100. Distortion will rotate the outer vertices that are points about the center of the star. Fillet value for radius 1 and radius 2 will round the inner and outer vertices of the star. The next important spline is text. You can use the text primitives to add outlined text to the scene. Text can use any Windows font installed on your system. Let's see how you can use text. Click Text from the Spline Object Type list and click on the top viewport. As you click, you will get Max Text as your text. To type your own text, go to the parameter rollout and type your text in the Text Input box. If you right-click on the Text Input box, you will get options for Copy, Cut, and Paste. This means that you can keep text from an outside application also. As you type your text in the text input box, it will be directly visible in the viewports. You can choose your required font from the font drop-down list. Just click this down button and a huge list of all system fonts will appear. You can make the text italics and underlined by using these two buttons. Next to that, one more set of buttons for alignment. Size will adjust the text size. Kerning will adjust spacing between each letter. Leading will adjust spacing between each line, hence this option will only work with multi-line texts. Next, we will see helix. A helix is like a spring coil shape. Let's see this as well. Click helix from the list, go to the top viewport, click and drag to fix radius 1. Leave the mouse button and move the mouse up or down to adjust the helix height and then click. Now as you move your mouse, radius 2 will move with the mouse. Adjust and click again. In parameter rollout, radius 1 and radius 2 values can be adjusted. Height can also be fixed from here. Turn will adjust the helix turns. And bias will force the turns to accumulate at one end of the helix. Note, bias has no visible effect when the height value is 0. A bias of minus 1.0 forces the turn toward the start of the helix. 0.0 .0 evenly distributes the turns between the ends, 
and 1.0 forces the turns toward the end of the helix. And with all this, we conclude our spline objects. Try them all and make use of all of them in your work.